glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word on today. God, we ask you to touch the heart, the mind, and the ears of every believer, that they would hear your word, that they would hear what you are speaking unto them in this time and in this place. Now, God, we invite you into this sanctuary. Forgive us of all sins, sins of the mind, the body, and the spirit. Let us come in with thanksgiving, with praise, giving you glory, honor, giving you all praise. Now, God, have your way in this place. Move by your spirit, anoint my mouth, that I may speak only what you've said, God, and anoint the ears of the hearers to hear your word. In Jesus' name we pray. All those who are believers agree and say amen. We thank God for the word on today. And the question proposed is why die? I think that is an appropriate question in today's society. People often ask, why do I have to give up so much? Why do I have to let go of so much? You don't want me to be happy. You don't want me to have fun. Why die? You cannot be immersed in God except you die to the flesh. Now, without death to the flesh, the flesh will prevail its desires over the desires of God. And God doesn't compete with anybody, not even you, not even your flesh. So when we look at the fact that the flesh leads in its desire accomplishment in our lives, it stands the question, that's why we need to die. The death I'm speaking of is death to the flesh, except you die to one thing. You can't take possession of another. John 3.3. 3. John chapter three, verse three says this. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except you be born again, except you deny the flesh, except that you put death to separate from self, greed, hate, fear, desire, flesh, lust, power, culture, family, society demands. Except that you separate yourself from these things, God has no place in your life simply because God wants to dwell in a vessel that has no other inhibitions but to please him, to be obedient to him, to have a relationship with him. And as long as flesh is able to pop his head up in every situation, that means God can't prevail. That means God can't come through because God, again, is not going to compete with your flesh. So that's why death must come. When we look at the death, we see that true death or separation from the flesh is seen in the obedience to God. God first, God only. You can tell if somebody actually, oh, hear me now, died to the flesh. Because there's going to pop up in any situation, every situation, multiple choices. And in the multiple choices, there will only be one that will prevail and that will be God's choice. That will be God's word. You will reflect on God's word and we will be able to see you having your steps ordered by God. When your steps are ordered by God, man can see success in front of you. Man can see God moving things out of your way. John 12 24 through 26 John 12 24 through 26. Verily, verily I say unto you 
except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. It abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. It becomes a question of servitude. It becomes a question of obedience. It becomes a question of who you walking with. It becomes a question of who you following. Are you going to follow your flesh desire, your world desire, your, your, your social status desire, your, your friend desire, your family desire? Or are you going to follow Christ? You going to follow God? If any man serve me, let him follow me. That's real plain and real simple. If you say you're a Christian, if you say you're a believer, that means you're following Christ. That means you say no to the world and yes to God. No matter what season the world is in, you say no to the world and yes to God. No matter how valuable it may seem that the world is offering you something, you say no to the world and yes to God. Those who are truly following God will go where he is and, and receive. Now, I like it because Jesus said, you will receive honor from my father. Now, ain't no greater honor than to be honored by God for your servitude to him. You must be truly in relationship with God. If you go to Galatians 5, 16 through 17. Galatians 5, 16 through 17. This will tell you that there needs to be death to the flesh and that you should live in the spirit and truth of the word. And listen, when I say that, I want to make sure that everybody get the understanding that when you live in truth and spirit, you can't practice that. You can't mimic it. You can't just start uttering words you heard somebody else do. Just because somebody tells you to put your head down and you do it in obedience. Now, obedience is a good thing. Great. But then if you're not sincere with your surrender, because putting your head down surrenders yourself to a higher power. If you're not being real with the surrender, you might well keep your head up. Might well walk in your flesh because that's what you're dwelling in anyway. It can't be mimicked. It can't be rehearsed. It can't be practiced. You've got to live spirit and truth. Your flesh got to die. There's a whole lot of lying, cheating, stealing. False accusations. All of these things exist in the flesh. And without the death to the flesh. You are literally living a lie. And if anybody here thinks that there will be no greater payment than the one that we pay here. Wait for it. It's coming. Be not deceived for God is not mocked. Whatsoever shall a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So just because you think you get away with it in this life and everything is good and lovely. there's a check you got to cash that's going to be bigger than anything you've ever seen. Whole lot of trouble. Compound payments come due at one point 
Anybody know anything about that when you own a house and you have a compound payment that comes due at the end of the term and all of a sudden you owe $10,000 or they extend you for 30 more years and you pay this absorbent amount of money? It's crazy. It's crazy. Finance world is how to get you. But when you live life and you live it deceitfully, dishonestly, in the world, in family, in friends, in society, when you don't put a death to that, there is a compounded interest compiling thing you got to pay. Called hell, fire, and brimstone. Ain't enough preachers preaching that. And those of us who are close to exiting make a whole lot of sense now, don't it? When we were their age, we didn't pay attention to it. We thought we were Superman. We was evil Knievel fans. He goes, Rrr! And you remember Evil Knievel. And he goes, you don't know nothing about that. Be quiet, girl. And he goes flying over stuff. And then he breaks stuff. And we thought he was the best thing coming. But he got old. And he stopped doing the stunts. And he figured out one of these days I'm going to kill myself. Ain't he dead now? Now the question with me, to him would be, you did all that for the world. What did you do for God? Because now you got to go see him. They gave you your reward. What was your reward while you was doing and performing for them? <sighs> you got all the accolades. Now that, now that you've given up the ghost, what's the ghost? What God gave you? Adam was nothing but dirt to God say, and breathe the breath of life in him. Then he became a living soul. That soul is something you couldn't see. It was a ghost. You couldn't see it. Spiritually. Now that spirit has to return to God. And be accountable. Hear me now. For what the flesh did. They said this a long time ago. We're just heavenly vessels living an earthly life. That kind of puts things into perspective, not kind of, but it does. Because if your original origin is from heaven, where you got to go back to? And you hope that there is a prepared room for you and not because God decided he said listen had a little conversation with Satan I want you to take you and all those who want to follow you your train of thought see that's why he said he'd give us a new mind and a new heart he said take all yours and I'm kicking y'all out because you can't be me I don't fight to be you Nobody talk about that part. Think about it. God wasn't fighting Satan to be Satan. God was just fine being God. Satan was the one who was glory hungry. Satan was the one trying to be more than he could be. Not asking God permission, but overstepping his boundaries. Walking into positions and places he had no business being. He did not put to death those things that rose up in him to make him believe he could be. Well, I can be a God too and I can have a kingdom and I can, I can be rich and I can be the, the best cholo, the best uh, black panther, the best. I, I can. Really? With God, all things are possible. But if you really believe God is into that foolishness, you're crazy. We must live our life for the glory of God. To show God in control here in us. That's why dying is the most important part. I've got to die. My flesh can't live. God will not reside in me. And my flesh side by side. He ain't going to do it. 
It's either him or not him. Him all the way. What that mean? Does that mean you can literally split yourself? No. But think about it. <clears throat> You're already two. One is flesh. The other is spirit. That deep seated thing in your heart that speaks to you sometime and tells you, don't go there. Don't go over there. That still small voice that tells you, hey, that's not okay. Don't go down that hall. It's a hospital, but something might be there. You don't need to go down there right now. There's a cloud of sickness moving through. And if you walk through it, you get it. But if you stay and listen to me just for a second, I'll help you avoid something that you don't want to get into. That's the spirit part of us. So God already gave us two things. The flesh. Then the spirit. Now, he said, I want you to do something for me. I want you to get rid of those fleshly desires that cause you to walk contrary to my spirit. Galatians 5, 16, 17. This I say then. Walk in the spirit. He wouldn't tell you to do it if you couldn't. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things you would what that mean I want to go to church what happened I overslept. What? Huh. Okay. I want to. I want to live right for God. What happened? My mama said we. What? Every time you have this question that comes up into your heart, into your mind, into your body, into your spirit. About whether or not to follow God or follow the world. How is it even a question? How it is it? How is it even something that gets pondered in the mind? God being the greater. How is it that our flesh is able to war with God? Why is that? Why do we allow that even? Think about it. He's God. He created everything that you know. And some things that you have no idea of. But you will stand in the ultimate form of flesh and argue God. And you act like it gets you somewhere. Some people even use the excuse, everybody doing it. Like we gone, hear me now, bully God into accepting something he's already given a word against. But everybody did it, God. So then everybody's guilty. What's your point? Uh, 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 you ain't got nothing to say now, huh? Now that he's declared everybody guilty of the same thing. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He already declared everybody guilty. So that whole concept of you telling me everybody doing it ain't going to work. That's no excuse. We do what we want to do. We go where we want to go. We accomplish what we want to accomplish. Good, bad, indifferent. It doesn't matter. We do it. Now what? God is looking for a people who are willing to be a vessel. Open. Available. Non-confrontational. What that mean, Bishop? Every time you turn around, you're trying to fight God. Why? Just do it his way. His way is the best way anyway. It gets you the best results. And when you do it God's way, hear me clearly. He, he said this earlier to me, and I got a word to tell somebody. When you do it God's way, he says that you build heavenly currency 
What that what what that look like, sir? When you do what I've called you to do, I asked you to do. He said, I want you to help the sick, visit the poor, da 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 da, da. When you do these things for me, you build heavenly currency. The only thing that's transferable from here to there. That's it. Gold, nope. He already got it. Diamonds, nope. He already got it. They can put it in the casket with you. But I promise you, when your soul get up out that dirt, none of the materialistic things that they put in that casket get up with you. Just your spirit get up. And if you have no currency already stored, what you got? A wing and a prayer? That used to be a song. Hard rock song. Living on a wing and a prayer. When we look at the word of God, we see that your flesh don't do nothing for God. Your flesh don't do nothing for God. Romans 8 and 8. Hmm. So then, they got to end the flesh. Can not please God. In other words, hmm. I don't care how cute you are. Your flesh ain't cute to God. It don't do nothing for him. Your flesh can flicker the man's heart. Move his eyes. And vice versa. But with God. God said I don't even look at that mess. I look at your heart. What's your heart doing? What's your heart saying? I heard your mouth. Your mouth said, I love you, but your heart was far from me. Your mouth said, I'll go, but every time I called you, didn't answer. Anybody know somebody like that? Every time I call, you don't, you don't pick up. You're not there. You don't, but I love you. What kind of love you got? Oh, you got the Hallmark card kind of love. Write it on the card, and that's about it. Give me a pretty card with glitter and stuff on it, and it look pretty in the heart shape, and all that. Oh, but then when I need you, ain't nowhere around. Don't even know me. You don't stand up for me. Listen, I'm going to say this. Y'all see her. That, that's that thing right there. Yeah, I'm saying it while I'm preaching. Yeah, God did it. I don't care what the leg doing. That's that thing, boy. Just a little bit. Go a long way. I'll come against anybody. I don't care how big you are. I don't care how much muscle you got for that. When a man findeth a wife, he findeth a good thing. So I'll be a monkey's uncle if I let anybody come against my good thing. Even if it were to be an angel from heaven. Oh, bless God. Mm -hmm. That went all over my plate. Because God said, you're right. You bet not. I gave you her. You don't even let an angel come and say sideways towards her. That's mine to protect to keep, to cover, to pray over. And when this won't work, this sure does. Which one do I try first? I don't go here first. I always know I got this. These I'm good with. And I'm old now. You know what that mean? I don't got that longevity. <laughs> I don't got that long wind. That mean when I pop you, I'm popping you because I'm trying to get over with. I ain't got all the time in the world. I won't do all that. I can't dance. I can't go back and forth with you. 
shoulder sometimes to act right. So I'm not finna box you. Finna hit certain spots that I know you can't do nothing with. Now what we doing? That's over that. God says, I need you to be that way over me. I need you to stand up in the midst of your whole family saying otherwise towards me. And you stand and say, but for God I live and for God I'll die. And you declare, live by decree and as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Because your flesh is unattracted to God. He don't care how slow you get. How long you hair. He don't care nothing about that. And matter of fact, you want to impress God, tell him how many hairs on your head. Anybody can do that? He can. He can tell you. He can tell you how many hairs on your body. Might gross you out. But he can tell you, you got hair growing in place you never knew you had. He can tell you though, you might have hairs on your eyeballs. You don't know. Doctors don't know everything. When you get there, where you deny the flesh access. You cut the flesh off. You cut off all them worldly desires where everybody doing something and you fall right in line. Galatians 6 and 8. You'll find out that when you stop sowing into the flesh and you sow into the spirit, <laughs> hear me now, your fruit change. You no longer get the hand claps, the roars. You, <laughs> you get the miracle signs and wonders on the spirit side. Hear me. When you sow into flesh, only what flesh can do is what you can have. But when you sow into the spirit, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Anybody been to glory? Anybody know what's there? Anybody got an idea of how much God got? Nope. Not even Satan. Satan was outfitted from God's vault. He was outfitted. He was made from God's vault. Yo. Galatians 6 and 8 says, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of what? His flesh. You can only get what you got. <laughs> For he that sowed to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sowed to the spirit shall of the spirit reap something that don't stop. Everlasting. 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 It don't stop. Heavenly currency, it transfers. When it's everlasting, it's transferable. It transcends time. It, God recognizes it. So the only way you receive transferable credit, if you will, is sowing into the spirit. Not in the mimicking nor the practicing. You can't practice this thing. Huh? God keep pouring that into me. So many people are going around thinking that it's a look. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. They sound a certain way. Oh, holy. They say hallelujah funny. Hallelujah, hallelujah. They think that it's a look. It's a sound. Oh, coming in a Honda. They think that as long as they can mimic what they've heard. And some flesh tells them, oh, you got it. What? Huh. 
What did God say? Your relationship to God is what counts. And if God is not even recognizing the antics that you're pulling, what you're pulling them for? They can't get you nowhere. Heaven is not a duplicated dance, sound, or look. Heaven is a relationship. How will I translate to heaven? Translate your relationship. Stop walking in the flesh. Walk in the spirit. He just told you that. Then he told you, Romans 8 and 8. So then, they are in the flesh, cannot please God. He just told you that. So I don't know why we have this argument or even conversation about your flesh when it don't count. This is just a hole for your spirit to live in. You need to get to know your spirit because it's on its way out. And the flesh is on its way to the dirt. It returns to the form of which it came from. Dirt. That's why preachers say ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Let's look at Galatians 6, 15. Because some people may argue, yeah, but holiness, you've got to, you got to wear a dress or you got to do. This is what Jesus said about all this. For in Christ Jesus, hear me now, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Let's break that down. Circumcision dealt with the fact that Abraham, under his promise of God, to show compliance with that promise, he circumcised all males. The cutting away of stuff you didn't need. So then it became a thing. If you were circumcised, you were better than the uncircumcised. It became a thing. They began to classify people. You uncircumcised Philistine. You uncircumcised this. You un they, classify they tried to get nasty with it. Jesus came along and said, hey, I'm not impressed with what your mutilation to the flesh does. What I'm impressed with is a dwelling place, a new creature. I don't care if you're circumcised or uncircumcised. I care about a place for me to dwell. Where I'm unopposed. Where I'm able to come into your heart and not have to compete with your culture, your family, you, your manhood, your thoughts. I've always wanted your dreams. I don't want to compete with that. I just want you. It's the most simplest and most complex relationship. Simplicity in the format of God just wants all of you. Simple, plain, all of you. Complex. The world is going to put up a good argument. The world is going to throw some things at you. And the world ain't playing. The world is filled with lies, deceit. Filled with temptation. And the word says that there is no temptation that has taken us. That we are not familiar with. What does that mean? If you think. Oh God. If you think. That a person gets caught. In a lie. Was the first time they lied. I'm here to tell you. They've made a career of it. They are a career liar, deceiver, mess starter. A person that is able to walk into a peaceful situation and cause havoc. Why? I got an answer. You want me to tell you why? You ready? 
If we walk in the flesh, what do we reap? The corruption of the flesh. His word declared it. I, I love it the way God will put something together and it match life's dealings right now. You can only get from the flesh what the flesh is capable of giving. Corruption. If you're not in the spirit, you ain't going to see it because it becomes normalcy for you. You think that's just normal. That's just them being them. That's just no, 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 no. Don't get it twisted. I got people in my family. I got a certain one. I'll go ahead and say it. I ain't scared. I got a aunt. Yeah. And all my other aunts make excuses for. Oh, that's just her. That's just the way she is. No. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. She's sowing into the flesh. Whereby what we see is the fruit thereof. The flesh. Because if she's sown in the spirit. We'd see the fruit of the spirit. Now if you go in there and you find it. Look for fruit of the spirit. Just. Everybody got a phone so Google it. Fruit of the spirit. Love. Kind. You'll find that none of those fruit. Are attributes of people who don't like you. <laughs> look it up. I ain't trying to put nobody on. Black. Romans 13, 14. Before we drop down, he said a new creature. Uh, an inhabitable, empty creature with no competing forces is the place where Christ wants to dwell. An inhabitable, empty creature. If you full of yourself, where God going to sit? All your furniture full. If you full of dreams and aspirations, where God going to sit? All of your furniture's full. If you got a company party coming, where God going to sit? You didn't invite him. But you'll be the first one to say hey, he'll keep us. What? Then when you come out of it unscathed, you believe that he kept you. He wasn't even involved in it. I don't hear the prayers of a sinner. Wait a minute, Bishop. What you saying? That if I go to a party, I'm a sinner? I didn't say that. That's the way you took it, though. You clean it up. I ain't got to clean it up. You took it that way. I didn't say it. You took it. It's sad when preachers try to clean up stuff because people take it. I'm not cleaning up nothing. If you take it the wrong way, you took it the wrong way. Romans 13, 14. But put ye on. What you got to put on? This collar don't mean nothing. This robe don't mean nothing. This bracelet don't mean nothing. This cheap jewelry don't mean nothing. Well, it ain't cheap. God forbid. It, it ain't cheap. But it's cheap in comparison to what I got to put on. What am I supposed to put on? But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of y'all need to get naked first to even put him on. I'm not going to clean that up either. Y'all got so much on. You put on God and he got to go through 15 layers? What? Just to get to you? You got to get naked first. Bear your soul. God, I'm here. I'm yours. In other words, Kill the flesh. 
Why die so Christ can live? That's why. Why do I have to why do I have to put death separation to my dreams, aspirations, family, culture, dream uh, so Christ can live? Because then Christ comes and says, "Now that I'm number 1 and you've put me on and notice the end, you've made no provision for the flesh." <laughs> I got to say it. What that mean? What that look like, Bishop? What? <clears throat> I'm a newborn Christian. Hear me now. <laughs> but I've put away my old ways. I've put to death. Watch this. But I kept some of them pictures I had. I just hid them now. I put away all fleshly desires, but I kept some of the toys that I used to play with, you know, things that I've used in ways that were unpleasing to God. What you mean? I might have cut somebody's throat with that knife. I remember it, but I say. I've renounced killing, but I keep the knife as a memento. I renounce being mean to people, but every now and again I'll make up a little sign that say, if you come to my house, you get dealt with. Every now and again, I have to keep something in my back pocket to remind me of the luster of my youth. Of how I used to be able just to walk up on somebody's wood. And watch them cow down. Then when they wouldn't, put them hands on them. And make them my subservient. I don't do that anymore, but I... I call up that certain person every now and again. You remember when I whooped your tail? To remind myself. Have I really disconnected myself from my life? I keep it on pause. Every now and again I go in the book. This is a female part. And I look at them red bottom shoes. <laughs> to remind me of who I used to be. Huh? I used to want the purses and the, and the, and the shoes. And the he said when you put me on. Listen, I need you to take off the world and everything in your past that caused disruption in your I need you to pull it off. You can't keep nothing. Let it go. Because what I have for you is greater. You're not letting go not to have. You're letting go to gain. Get that. It's very important. You're not letting go not to have. God isn't asking you to give up stuff so that you are without. He's asking you to give up so that you may have greater everlasting life. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. If he can live in you, you can live with him in eternity. It's an exchange. If you ain't concerned about where you go after you die, and to some folk, they not. I can tell you all that right now. Some folk are not concerned about that. Because if they were, they'd be real, they'd be a lot better. But because they're not concerned with where they're going, they live their life as a hellion. What can you do with that? What can you do with that? Say it. Nothing. Baby girl, what can you do with it? Nothing. Son? Nothing. Nothing. Granddad? Nothing. Now that we all got an understanding that we can't do nothing about people who want to live a certain way, 
you live as unto God. You put on the whole armor of God. And having done all to stand, stand. Because only in your standing will you be able to have transferable heavenly currency. When you give up and you go toe to toe, eye for eye, two for two, uh-uh, uh-uh. God said, vengeance is mine. And then he told you this. He said, not only is vengeance is mine, he said, and I shall repay. All I need you to do is to submit yourself under the awesome power of God and I'll handle your enemies. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you for all that you've done and all that you will do and all that you're doing. God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for healing. We thank you for our right minds. Now, God, move by your spirit in our lives. Cause us to rise above the circumstances that are currently and presently in our lives and cause us to be the people you've caused us to be. The people you've anointed us to be. Strengthen us, God. Strengthen mind, body, and spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we surrender to you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. And all those who agree, say amen.